the idea of aliens, and I'm getting really sick and tired of this notion, and I'm pretty sure it's only for sci-fi purposes. They started to approach what I'm going to talk about today with Prometheus. But here's the thing. The universe is 20 billion years old. Our human civilization has been around for 10,000 years. Industrialization has been around for 200 years. So 200 years of that 20 billion year span, Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about this, is the extent of our telecommunications off planet. So the odds that some alien species in physical form would pass by the earth at this particular time and space of all of the millions and millions of, of 1000 year segments that a species could evolve to the point when, when we've evolved is, dare I say, astronomically low. But here's the thing, in only, let's, let's be generous, let's say 200 years, we've come from basically having no digital technology at all, like nothing, um, not even machines, not even electricity, to having almost, we're almost on the brink of artificial intelligence. Imagine two, three hundred years from now, whatever remains of the human species, what's that going to look like? Right now, we envision these giant hunks of metal and we envision aliens because that's what Hollywood has conditioned people to think an extraterrestrial species is all about. Even in the word extraterrestrial, extra terrain, so you're assuming that some biological being is going to have their ass transported, their literal ass, because if you're biological, you got an ass. So whatever alien species exists in the physical form, you can bet your bottom dollar, they got toilets. And that just seems silly, right? And there's a reason why it seems silly, because it is silly. Just in the same way that people could not imagine the Earth spun around the sun and there was galaxies and there was galaxy clusters and an infinitely expanding universe that emerged from the Big Bang. That's why we can only imagine this extension of these primitive objects that we've created right now, these machines, these spaceships. You know, do you really think that in a thousand years we would need spaceships, especially if we developed artificial intelligence? You don't think that there'll be some grand understanding of the universe discovered by whatever sort of artificial intelligence we create, which of course is going to reach a, a singularity in which it begins to teach itself and remake newer, better versions of itself at the speed of light. So once generalized artificial intelligence is created, I mean, that's it. Any species that makes it to the point of getting true, artificial, self-replicating, self-enhancing artificial intelligence probably masters that space-time continuum to such an extent that they can be anywhere at any time. They would be omnipotent. They would be very godlike. Whichever species, whichever what we would call aliens out there figures out the riddle first basically gets dominion over the universe. Uh, of course, they in their physical form wouldn't be at all concerned about our petty pleasures and indulgences and, you know, wanting a nice house and a swimming pool and uh, a nice looking girlfriend or boyfriend. They wouldn't be concerned with that kind of stuff. Uh, their consciousness or see, we don't even know what consciousness is yet. Lots of people would consider themselves conscious because a neuron fires here and a neuron fires here and they have this sub vocalization going on and they think that like right now you're watching this, you're formulating thoughts and opinions. You have this idea that you're aware. I don't even think we're, we're conscious. Anyways, so what an alien is then is it's omnipotent. So it's probably here right now. It's probably not probably it is if there is alien life which evolved a thousand years beyond where we are then they would reach a certain level of understanding of the universe where they could be anywhere at any given time in the space-time continuum so this rustic uh, primitive notion of these hunks of metal floating through space for millions and millions of years in order to reach a destination with their people on board who are maybe cryogenically frozen, or maybe it's a self-regenerative 
system, a closed loop system, just like the Earth, when you think about it, the Earth is kind of a closed loop system with the exception of the sun, which is constantly inputting energy into it. So you would need some sort of fusion reactor in order to have a regenerative, I should say, civilization that floated through space. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's extremely unlikely that our software is not going to outpace our hardware. This is what you notice in Hollywood movies. We always exaggerate the hardware. Nothing better exemplifies that than the Death Star, a civilization which was that advanced. Why would you need this giant gun to blow up a planet? Like you don't think they would have figured out some other way to do it which didn't involve a, such a huge mechanistic solution and you they always underestimate the software so they have this giant death star and then they have all of these uh, part of it's because they were limited with cgi and what they could do but and then it has all these little red and green buttons on it you know so they could never imagine a 8k resolution interactive display you'll notice that with all movies we always underestimate the software and the software with regards to what I'm talking about is us being transmitted in some energy form that we don't understand yet, some wavelength, maybe not even transmitted in a wavelength, but like I say, finding a way to master wormholes or teleportation or... So when Hollywood puts out these movies about freaking aliens coming down and hunting people, any alien species, which came to earth and seen how primitive we really are and this is one of the scariest things that i ever heard it was it was like a moment of realization when i heard Nick, neil degrasse tyson talk about how what if you know the space station isn't that much different than a monkey uh beating an animal with a a, a bone that it's using as a bludgeon right like we think that there's a huge difference between the chimpanzee and the human, when really it's just a couple percent difference in the actual DNA. Now I know we share like 50% of the same DNA with an apple or something like that, but we view ourselves as being so advanced. Who, who defined us as intelligent? We did. We did. <laughs> so is that some cosmic measure of intelligence? Perhaps not. But even 200 years ago, if you were to show somebody uh, nanotechnology or virtual reality or any freaking technology that we have nowadays they would be in utter dis they, they wouldn't be able to ever imagine what we have now i'm really sick and tired of these alien movies and people talking about ufos the reality is if something visits us it's probably not going to be a biological life form if anything there may be some cyborg aliens would have blended with their machines at some point in such a way which was regenerative. So it, it integrated some of the organic principles of the universe with the inorganic in such a way which made this entity which could traverse the cosmos while retaining some biological component, if you will. But I'm pretty sure in the near future, the lines between biological and artificial are also going to be become blurred between organic and inorganic. But as we learn more and more about the nature of the universe, I mean, even the Native Americans, uh, they believe that the, the, the rocks have a spirit and that the, the earth has its own spirit. Every single thing in existence has a spirit, but we have this notion where we believe that only organic things have sentience. And especially uh, with respect to sentience, that we humans are more sentient, that we have more consciousness. When it, it's very possible that our, our thought process is just slightly more complicated and that we really don't have consciousness. Because I can tell you, I meet a lot of people and uh, if I don't think I'm conscious, there's no way in hell these people are conscious. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Back to our regular scheduled programming. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. 
premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.